Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Ultimate Antenna. This is an antenna that's made by a fellow named Danny Hodges in Georgia. It runs about $85 on eBay, and while it doesn't make too many outrageous claims in the product description, I did hear Danny refer to it as unbeatable in one of his YouTube videos. Here's a quick clip. This antenna right here is unbeatable. And listen now, I ain't the lying kind. Unbeatable. How true is that claim? You'll find out in this video. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. So back to this antenna. As I mentioned, it's made by a guy named Danny Hodges who lives in Georgia. He has a YouTube channel full of information on how to build this antenna, along with some reviews demonstrating his antenna picking up a bunch of channels. Now, a video showing an antenna picking up a bunch of channels is not an accurate way to show how it performs since it's not comparing the antenna to anything. At some locations, you can get 40 channels crystal clear with a paperclip. Does that make a paperclip a good antenna? No, it just means you're in a good reception situation. The design isn't anything too original. The four bay antenna design has been around for years under many companies, including currently under Channel Masters Ultra Tenna 60 and the Antennas Direct DB4E. There are also a few generic antennas using the same design on eBay and Amazon. While this antenna will pick up VHF TV stations if the signals aren't too weak, the majority of the gain will likely be on the UHF band. If you look at Channel Master's Ultra Tenna 60 under the gain specs, you'll see that it only has a third of the gain on the VHF band compared to UHF. As a quick refresher, or for those of you seeing me for the first time, VHF TV stations broadcast on channels 2 through 13 and typically require a longer antenna element to pick up, while UHF TV stations broadcast on channels 14 and above and are better picked up with smaller elements. And it's important to note that most TV stations don't broadcast on the channel number you may know them as. So, for example, in my area, there is an NBC 28 WBRE. The average person may say, okay, that's on the UHF band, any UHF antenna. It actually broadcasts on the VHF band, VHF channel 11. The same can be said for most TV stations across the country. To find out what channels your local TV stations are broadcasting on, go to antennaweb.org type in your address and look at the RF channel number. I must say, I was very excited to purchase this antenna and review it. After all, it's made by a guy in Georgia compared to most antennas that are made in China. However, I was a bit disappointed before even testing out this antenna for a few reasons. First, there weren't any pre-drilled holes for the screws, meaning you had to use a drill to put this antenna together. This is a little bit dangerous if someone doesn't have the proper drill bit and they just want to put the antenna together. There is a very, very, very small chance that they may accidentally drill a screw into their hand instead of into the antenna. I'm also not a huge fan of how the ballon is attached to the antenna. While the ballon is soldered on pretty good, there is a small chance that if you happen to pull the coaxial cable or it falls, that this ballon may come off and then you have to re-solder it back on. Finally, the antenna did not come with any kind of brackets to mount the antenna. I'm not talking about a pole to mount the antenna on the roof. I'm talking about the brackets that secure the antenna to the pole. You can see that this antenna does not have any of them. I had to buy a pair of clamps from Lowe's in order to put it on my pole and even then it was not the most secure. Despite these flaws, the antenna does look sort of promising. It has a decent directional design with what looks like UHF elements here and a reflector on the back. How well will it pick up both VHF and UHF stations? I'm now going to test it in the same location I've tested out various other outdoor antenna models 
on my YouTube channel. Most of the stations are about 45 miles away on both the UHF and VHF band. Here's a list of the stations along with their RF channels and their signal strengths on the last two antennas I tested out on my YouTube channel. On the left side, you'll see the type of diffraction on the TV station. One edge means single edge diffraction or one ridge between me and the transmitter weakening the signal. Two edge means two edge diffraction or two ridges weakening the signal between me and the transmitter. LOS means line of sight with virtually no obstructions in the way. You can also see the results of various other outdoor antenna models by checking out my other videos. The signal strength on WNEP, which broadcasts on UHF channel 50, was honestly about the same on this antenna as the last two antennas I tested out. The signal strength on WYOU, which broadcasts on VHF channel 13, showed significant signs of breakup. I did try rotating the antenna a bit, but the breakup was still present no matter where I pointed the antenna. The signal on WBRE was good, which sort of surprised me. It showed that this antenna can get VHF stations reliably if the signal is strong enough and if the antenna is in the right spot. The signal strength on FOX56, which broadcasts on UHF channel 22, was about the same on this antenna compared to the one UHF antenna I tested out and higher than the Channel Master Yagi. The signal strength on FOX29's low-powered repeater was a bit lower on this antenna compared to the one UHF antenna, and about the same as the Channel Master antenna. The signal on WNJB's repeater was higher on this antenna compared to the Masterpiece antenna, but a little bit lower than the one UHF antenna. This antenna performed pretty well on the UHF band. Not the best, but still pretty decent. However, it did have issues on the VHF band with the one channel. Some of you may say, well, Tyler, Danny offers a VHF kit. Why didn't you test it out? I actually did. The VHF kit wasn't anything to brag about. It looked like half a coat hanger, some hot glue, and a ballon. The elements weren't snug well in place and looked like they could easily come out. Just like with the main antenna, there weren't any brackets with this kit, so it had to be drilled directly on the main antenna. Here were the results side by side. The VHF kit increased the signal on WIOU, but decreased the signal on WBRE, so I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Several antennas I tested out were able to pick up both stations with signal levels in the 70s and even in the 80s. Overall, this antenna performed pretty good on the UHF band, but only average on the VHF band, even with the VHF kit. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This antenna did perform better than other antennas I've tested out, so I'm not going to completely rip on it. What I will kind of rip on is how I don't like that the ballon is just kind of soldered on here. I mean, it's on here good, but if it comes off, what do you do? I personally would have used some kind of bolt and washer setup. I also don't understand why there aren't any brackets on the back of the antenna to mount it to a pole. I do expect Danny himself to see this video and probably respond to it. If he has any statement in terms of the ballon, you know, if it comes off what to do, or why there aren't any brackets on this antenna to mount it, I will post an update in a pinned comment below. Now, despite some criticisms I have of this antenna, I'd say it would still work well for someone who is handy with tools in a moderate to strong signal area with mostly UHF channels. This antenna will pick up VHF channels, but only if they are on the moderate to strong side. If you have stations on the VHF band that are weak, I don't care what Danny claims, you're going to need a large Yagi style antenna with multiple elements in order to reliably pick up those channels. So what is the ultimate antenna? It would depend on what frequencies are trying to be picked up. If it's pretty much all UHF, Danny's antenna might do the job for you. But almost every market has VHF stations alongside the weak UHF signals the ultimate antenna would be trying to pick up. Antennas are not a one-size-fits-all model, and I honestly don't think I'll ever say that one specific antenna is the best antenna out there for everyone, and it's going to get you as many channels as possible compared to every single antenna out there. That's not the case. 
This is why I offer custom antenna recommendations on my website at antennamanpa.com. There I'll go through your unique reception situation, take a look at the signal level, frequencies, and tell you what your ultimate antenna is. Thanks again for watching my YouTube channel. A huge thanks to these folks who support me on Patreon and are members of my YouTube channel. If you would like to help support my channel while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, participation in a monthly live stream, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. Stay tuned to my channel for more cord cutting and antenna related information and have an awesome day.